Um, so Move It or Lose It is about helping older people and those with long-term health conditions to stay active, to become active uh, physically, cognitively and socially. So we train instructors in our FABS programme, which is flexibility, aerobics, balance and strength, along with games and activities that can be done seated or standing. All the exercises relate to those activities of daily living to help people stay independent and well for longer. We have an online club which started during lockdown, which also helps people who can't get to a class. So we've got thousands of people joining in those classes, but how do we reach those people who don't feel they're able to come to one of those classes? And particularly working with carers, volunteers and NHS staff. Well, it began uh, several years ago when the charity, the Royal Voluntary Service, asked us to collaborate with them uh, with our chair-based exercise programme. And they ran a 12-month pilot and did an independent evaluation. Here's what they found. It showed positive impacts, particularly for frailer older people. And they were very surprised that it wasn't just about that physical function, but actually they saw an improvement in happiness, a reduction in anxiety and loneliness. And they trialed this. Uh, one of the people that ran the training was Karen Rose, um, who was at Morecambe Bay NHS Trust at the time. And this really, they found, was giving patients a sense of purpose, which Claire mentioned a little bit earlier, going to buy the newspaper for yourself. That's brilliant. Um, and also enjoyment it is about making movement fun, as you can see her quote there. So it was working up until, unfortunately, the pandemic um, caused all of those games and activities to stop. But wonderful that we've been able to reignite that flame now. And very quickly, just running through the types of exercises that um, the in, people learn. And this is what Claire's team of enhanced care support team were learning on the chair based course. It's so they can have that conversation with their patient and think about, well, what are you struggling with? How can I help you? What would you like to do? So the exercise has a real purpose. For example, this chest stretch, how it can help you with being able to get dressed. We know how vital it is and how important it is for people to feel their self-esteem at being able to get on and off the loo more easily, to be able to get up and down steps. And the leg strengtheners that are part of the programme can aid with that as well. Simple things like improving that arm strength, being able to make the bed, do the housework, do the cooking again. And leg stretches to help you put your shoes and socks and your slippers on more independently. So it's little things that might not seem important that really make a big difference to people's uh, self-efficacy. And uh, goodness me, that I think we all have a problem with this occasionally. But of course, as we're losing our strength, it's not being able to open that those food packaging. You know, that lovely jar of marmalade that you've been saving and you can't get it open. Can we look at that grip strength? Um, also for helping with moving frames, if they're using that, what we, we need grip strength, hand and arm strength, as well as leg strength for all of these activities of daily living. So when Claire came, uh, uh, got in touch and really got to understand what the uh, people were going to be doing in the enhanced care support team and working one to one, we thought that this chair based exercise course would be absolutely perfect. It could be that just simple single exercises could be part of that package and that program when they're sitting with their patients with one-to-one -one support. Or could it be on the discharge ward, could it be when people can gather together and have that little sense of fun, community and camaraderie by running a class? But we know that they didn't want to be full blown fitness instructors. They're not choreographing routines and dance like it would be on Strictly. So it was working with them for two days, um, which they actually found quite challenging because we were on the move all the time, learning those exercises, delivering them 
and observing so that we could make sure that they feel really safe, competent uh, to have the knowledge and the skills to do these exercises that don't require a physiotherapist. So there's uh, 14 people there, literally days away from starting in their new role with their brand new uniforms on, uh, looking amazing and so enthusiastic about going out and being able to do something more than just talk to someone as valuable as that is, to be able to encourage them to move, to prevent that deconditioning and help them feel able then to go and join a community class like the Move It or Lose It classes um, where they may not have had that confidence before. And by showing them that exercise doesn't have to be hard or painful, it is about finding something you love, enjoy and uh, have fun with too. I'm hoping this video will show you the kind of fun that they had doing the training that will translate to the people that they're going to be supporting. And so that brings my presentation to an end. Um, please get in touch if there's any information that people want to know more about. We have got some bed and chair exercises that have been approved by geriatricians and physiotherapists that's completely free an open resource on the Move It or Lose It YouTube channel that might be helpful as well for patients who, as Claire mentioned, can't get up uh, to be able to participate in the chair-based exercise as well. Thank you so much for listening and open to questions. Thank you, Claire and Julie. Um, oh, I'm getting very finger happy. I'm switching the camera on and off like anything <laughs> until it's coming to the end of the summit. Um, um, thank you both very much. Um, I see uh, there's already been a question in about the the uh, the dashboard. Do you want to elaborate on that a little bit, Claire? Yeah, so it was just an idea. Initially, when we launched the games, it, it was more to me muted. about that, that. Oh, can you hear me? Can you hear can me you? okay? Is it me that can't? Yeah. Yes, I can hear yeah, you. Normally, you're good. Thanks, Julie. Um, so, yeah, when we launched the Games, for me, it was just the right thing to do, regardless of um, any outcomes in length of stay or um, pathway to bed reductions. It was the right thing for us to do for our patients. Um, so we, we held off, really, trying to measure no other than gaining um, patient feedback, really, and how staff felt as well. Um, but... Now that we are almost 12 months into the Games, um, we thought that it would be a good idea now to start and see whether some of that has had an impact. So we know that our numbers of falls have reduced each month, um, and that has correlated with the start of the Week on Games work um, and have continued to reduce the more wards that have got involved. Um, so, yeah, um, just that it's in development. Um, there's lots that we're looking to put onto it. Um, and the wards are really keen as well, because I think they they know that they've done all of the hard work, but it would be great um, to be able to see that in a dashboard is what they're saying to us. So your chair based exercise programme, obviously, we have presented it in the context here, but that's that's helped probably thousands by now, hasn't it? So do you want to just to say a little bit more about that in its more generic? Absolutely, yes. With, um, with the Royal Voluntary Service, for example, we've trained over 400 volunteers. Again, when people come home from hospital, it means that they feel that they're confident to be able to help them do some simple things like make their own cup of tea and, and you know, go and walk down the garden and so on. Um, and, and it worked wonderfully well in that hospital setting, which is why I'm so glad that it's been started up again. And in terms of our classes, there's over 25,000 people turn up every week in the church hall, the community centre, 
And if we can just give them that little bit of hand holding to come through the door for the first time and show them what they can do instead of being worried about what they can't do, it just opens up their mind and it opens the door literally to getting back to being active again. <laughs>